Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Today we're going to look at the man who spotted the Bismarck. Indeed, what a fascinating story. This is an Leonard B. Smith. Leonard B. Smith has a close relationship to Ireland and the Bismarck has a history attached to Ireland and we're going to look in today to this fascinating story so grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and let's sit by the fire so I hope the audio there's an improvement with the audio department here I've spent a long time fixing my audio and this is actually the fourth attempt of doing this video to get it perfect so and the reason why this is a philosophy of mine that I still continue to use to this day and if you give me six hours if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I'll spend the first four sharpening my axe. Abraham Lincoln. So that's more or less what I've been doing all week. Instead of chopping and chopping and chopping. If my tools aren't sharp, you're going to be there for a long, long, long time. So I've been sharpening my tools and I hope the audio does sound better. So... Let's get back to the story. The Bismarck. What a fascinating story this is. And Leonard B. Smith was an American pilot who spotted the German battleship Bismarck with priority of being sunk by British naval and air forces. So, this is a fascinating story. The man, the Mr. Legend, this guy. And in previous videos, I've said about these different groups, paramilitaries, these are real soldiers, in my, in my opinion. This is real soldiering. Um, if the Bismarck hadn't have been sunk, I don't know what would have happened in history. But... Um, Leonard Smith was the first American to participate in a World War II naval victory and sometimes considered the first American to be directly involved in World War II for his actions. Phenomenal. Isn't that amazing that this man is considered the first American to be involved in any World War II action? It's a fascinating story. And we want to get into it here. So, the Bismarck, as you well know, the Terror of the Sea, the Bismarck and the Kriegsmarine. So, the Bismarck battleship, I'm just going to show you a comparison here. I'm going to show you a comparison. So, did you know that the Bismarck was a little shorter than the Titanic. Would you believe that? And I'm just going to show you the scale here. The Titanic was 882 feet long, I believe. Yep. From bow to stern, the length of the Titanic was. 882 eight, feet and I believe the Bismarck was 823 before look 823 it is indeed 823 feet so what is it 50 54 55 feet the Bismarck was 55 feet shorter than the Titanic and if you look at here the Titanic had a displacement weight of 52,000 tons 
and the Bismarck was it 50,000 tons so that's the scale we're talking about here massive and this is carrying 2,000 men with ammunition and food doctors hospitals all sorts it's just absolutely fascinating and rest in peace all the people that were involved in this battle and i'm just going to show you the comparison here of the bismarck <clears throat> the speed of the titanic so just to show you a comparison to that the speed of the titanic clocked 30 knots i believe cruising 21 21 knots and that was considered absolutely the the best engine the, the best engine in the world um, at that time the titanic and if you look here at the bismarck the speed i believe it was 30 knots speed yep 30.0 and in the sea trails apparently they actually got faster than this as you can see here uh, during the sea trails but what a fascinating story this is and without leonard smith i really do not know what what would have happened in history so as i said there the first american to be considered directly involved in world war ii for his actions so this is the comparison that i'm going to show you with the lo the location of it and I'm going to show you the scale. So a number of US pilots um, who had ferried Catalinas. Catalinas are the water planes across the UK and they're supposed to familiar, familiarize the RAF crew with the plane. They were unofficially used as co-pilots on operations unofficially because the work because the USA the United States of America was not at war with Germany at the time. So America weren't officially at war yet. And Smith was acting as a co-pilot of AH545 WQZ of number 209 squadron, which had been specifically assigned a search area for the after the contact was lost with the Bismarck shortly after the battle of the Denmark Strait so this is the image the last image the last contact of the Bismarck and this was actually taken by a Spitfire this image here Green image taken by a Spitfire pilot flying at 25,000 feet led to one of the most significant incidents of World War II. So, off, after this image, all contact was lost. And if it wasn't for Smith here, the man, the myth, the legend. So, the Denmark Strait, they flew out of flying boats on Loch Iron through the Donegal Corridor. And Loch Iron is here. This is Loch Iron. And right here is is the base. And it hasn't changed much. But I'm just gonna show you the scale of the Bismarck. If we go here to Belfast where the Titanic was constructed. Here 
This is where the Titanic was built. I'm just going to show you the scale. Can you see this on the ground? This is where the Titanic slipways. The Titanic was in the gum trees here. And this floor pattern is exactly the A deck where the first class would have sat. These are all exact seats where first class would have been sitting. And they say the band that actually played when the ship went down played round about here. And these are the chimneys here. And you can see there's only three because if you remember all the images there's always four one was not actually an engine this was a chimney that brought air circulating for uh, the rest of the passengers so um, and they say that this contributed to the sinking to speed up and there is conspiracies about the titanic uh, J jp morgan very, 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 and, and John Jacob Astor. John Jacob Astor, if you don't know who that is, he was the richest man on board the, ti the Titanic. And he escaped with a bunch of women. He, just, he jumped into a boat with a bunch of women. And uh, he actually got shunned by his local people because he didn't go down like a man with the rest of the men and just to go back to the slipways here as I said the Bismarck was slightly shorter and you can see the bow from bow to stern you can see it you can actually see the Olympic here this was the sister the sister ship and Right here is, so I'm going to do the 3D, right here is this piece, the captain's bridge. It's very fascinating stuff, so if I turn the camera around here, this was the size of the Titanic when she was in the water. And we can back to, from there to there was the size, that just shows you the size. And in a previous video, in a previous video, I had been saying that there's a secret message written around this building in Morse code. And I was saying that I will tell people, but I would like to see in the comment section if anybody can, if anyone can figure it out but I will do a video about the secret message surrounding the Titanic building that's playing over and over and over but um, I just want to show you the scale of the Bismarck what size it would have been and this is a quarter of a mile long a quarter yes I'll repeat that the Titanic was just under a quarter of a mile long and here was where the titanic was designed part of the move drawn offices and mr andrews lived in here yep. and right here is the ss nomadic ss stands for steamship and rms titanic royal mail service um, I am very interested in this type of stuff, but I love British history too. And this nomadic is a fantastic attraction, and it's the only surviving class from the Titanic. From that was the baby sister. This was called the tender ship, um, and the reason why it was a tender ship was because most ports did not have the capability of taking the titanic 
because it was so massive. But just to show you the scale, that is that building. And you could fit that building maybe in this maybe three times four, three and a half. And we've got a huge this is where ships were actually repaired. And these are the cranes that built the Titanic. But I don't wanna I'll stay on the Bismarck here. So back to Leonard here. So the they flew out of flame boots on Lock Iron through the Donegal corridor. The plane was primary, pre, primarily piloted by British flying officer Dennis but Briggs sorry of officer Dennis Briggs but Smith was at the controls when the battleship was spotted. So he was Briggs um, was the flying officer but Smith was on the controls at 10 10 must have been 10 a.m. Um, 10 a.m. on the 26th of May 1941, heading for Brest, he jettisoned the DAP charges and made for cloud cover under heavy aircraft fire. Jeez, so the Bismarck had spotted him and started returning fire. And I was thinking there, what anti aircraft? Uh, weapons did the Bismarck have was 88 millimeter you know the 88 on the air I'm not too sure or was it just 40 40 millimeter on the air you know in sandy rounds flak I'm not too sure but I would love to hear your opinion so losing sight of the Bismarck and never regaining contact Two other Americans were also in Catalina's that spotted the Bismarck later that day. Lieutenant Johnson in M of number 240 Squadron R RAF and Resain Re ran uh, Reinhardt in O number 210 Squadron RAF. Knowing the battles, knowing the battleship's position and accurately enabling the British Navy to interpret it and sank soon after. Smith was awarded the Flan, the Distinguished Flan Cross for his role in the sinking of the Bismarck. Phenomenal. And um, he was later sent to Hawaii and was flying a train mission between Midway and Pearl Harbor when the base was attacked. Isn't that nuts? Isn't that mental? That imagine going on a training mission and coming back and seeing what happened in Pearl Harbor. Dear Lord, on the morning of the 7th of December 1941, he remained in the Pacific Theatre for the remainder of the war. He later fought in Korea. What a legend. He reached the rank of captain and then retired from the Navy in 1962. After his retirement, he lived in Freddy Harbour. Freddy Harbour is a town in San John County, Washington, United States. The population of 2,112 people. Jeez, that's a small community. So let's go back to Ireland, Loch Erne, Northern Ireland. You can see the border here. Like, look at that. You're in the south, the north, the south. Crazy, but uh, yeah, that's the border. But we're gonna go to Loch Erne here, where the base was located. And this is the image here. 
controlled by the Royal Air Force, Second World War Air Ministry, built in 1940. Fascinating, amazing part of history. And this island here, I'm going to show you way more images. We're going to go into much more detail. But this island, that's this island here. Castle Archdale and our REF Castle Archdale was also known for a whale as REF Loch Ern. It was a Royal Air Force station used by the REF and the Royal Canadian Air Force station in County Fermanagh, North, Northern Ireland. Look at that. That's insane. Piece of history. So, RF Castle Archdale was located on the eastern shore of Loch Erne near the village of Lesnarick. It was used during the Second World War by flying boats of the 209 Squadron. See, just cross examining details. Number 209 Squadron. From Castle Archdale, um, Consolidated Catalinas and Short Sunderlands could patrol the North Atlantic for German U boats. A secret agreement with the Government of Ireland allowed aircraft to fly from Loch Erne to the Atlantic along the Donegal Corridor, providing vital air cover from one of the most westerly RAF bases in the United Kingdom. And because we were neutral during the war, um, that I believe that all of Ireland uh, agreed to this, and this is why Hitler bombed Bel uh, Belfast and fire departments from the south actually came up. But we're going to go into this, and this is amazing here. This is the exact plane, the exact plane that, that took off that day and changed history. So this is the boat that you see in the video of Sabaton, fantastic song, fantastic song of the Bismarck and this is the boat that's in the video and this took off from Loch Erne. So we are, we're in that video, our history. So in May 1941, German battleship Bismarck was found during a uh, daily routine patrol by a Catalina and Flan out of Castle Archdale boat base on the lower Loch Erne of Northern Ireland. And um, this is absolutely amazing. So the base, and it's very eerie too, I'm going to show you the base was closed after the Second World War. And today is a part of Castle Archdale Country Park. The slipway remains in use, and the concrete stands for parking the Catalina aircraft are now a part of the caravan set. So I'm going to show you here, and here, here it is, right here, and that was the base. So, all their buildings lie derelict and overgrown in the surrounding forest. A museum in the park grounds has a section devoted to the road during the Second World War. Fantastic. But we're going to go back here to Castle Archdale. So just to show you, that's that island here. That's that island, and there's the base there, and you can actually see the slabs, the concrete slabs here. And this is the concrete slabs now. Isn't that so eerie? 
Look at that boat. That freaks me out. That sits there all day and all night. Silently. But it is really eerie. And I have actually been here. But I've never been to this exact location. Me and, me and my friend uh, got canoes. We got canoes. And we went from... My friend lives in Balik. There's Balik. Yep. Balik. Here. We got on canoes and down this river. We went down this river. It took, it took us days and days. And we camped. I believe it was here. I believe it was here. And there's a castle around here. There's a big castle. In these forests. Here. There's a big castle in here called Castle Cardwell. And the whole family died. It was... Um, it was apparently cursed and I think it was like 28 people died in one year or two years and they controlled all the trade back in the in the Viking times I believe it was during the Viking times or just after a big family called the Cardwells uh, controlled this whole region and they all died I don't know what the hell happened but it was something like 27 people died in one year. Uh, so let's go back to the image here. So this is Castle Archdale now. Caravan set. And not, nothing much has changed. And what I think is with Mr. Leonard here is that he now lives uh, sorry he passed away he sadly passed away in 2006 but he retired and lived in Freddie Harbour which is actually islands small islands and I'm wondering after the war was he so in love with all these islands and this is where they've done films like Game of Thrones and whatnot. See, there's another castle. There was loads of castles put around here in ancient times. And uh, Tully Castle. <clears throat> Tully Castle. But the Fermanagh Lock is a phenomenal place. A f absolutely amazing place. So... It does make sense that when Leonard retired, he made his home. And this is another angle. Look at all them boats. Well, they're planes, but they float. Absolutely amazing. And you can see on this image here, the boat. Where's the boat in that image? And that's still there from World War Two. I believe it was 19, 1944. I believe. Um, when the base fully left. But isn't that amazing that that's where the boats would have been? Sorry, the flying boats. So let's get back to the Bismarck. Yeah, so British code breakers were able to decrypt some of the German signals, including an order from the Luftwaffe to provide support for the Bismarck making for Brest, decrypted by Jean Fiquet. Um, 
On the 25th of May 1941, the French resistance provided the British with confirmation that the Luftwaffe units were relocating there. Toei could now turn his forces towards France and converge the areas through which the Bismarck would have, would have to pass. A squadron of the Coastal Command, the PYB, and I think up stand for Petrol Bomber. Uh, Petrol Bomber. Be sure what the Y means. Um, Coastal Command PYV Catalina is based in Northern Ireland. There, there we go. Uh, joined the search, converting, uh, covering the areas where the Bismarck made head to attempt to reach France. At 10:30 on the 26th of May, Catalina piloted by the same Leonard B. Smith. There we go, Mr. Leonard getting a shout out. of the US Navy lo located her and we've got here back it was at 10 past 10 they had so it had taken 20 minutes or so for the um, for Leonard to relay the message that he had actually spotted it um, 10 30 on the 26th of May, a Catalina piloted by yep, of the US located her northwest of Brest. And when you look more into the story, when you look more into it, he actually spotted oil first. He spotted oil in the sea and he found it very, very strange. I don't know if he made a thought that it was a um, German submarine that was about the surface or something, but think he continued to look around and there there he was and yep the Bismarck is referred to as he um, at the current speed she would have been close enough to reach the protection of the U-boats and the Luftwaffe in less than a day in less than a day the whole world changed because I wonder what would have happened if the Bismarck had have actually landed back in France. Most British forces were not close enough to stop her. The only possibility for the Royal Navy was the Arc Royal with H, with Force H under the command of James Somerville. And what I'll do here is yep. This is the image of the Bismarck the journey and it just shows you the night the naivety of the German forces that a ship the size of the Titanic would not get spotted out in the sea and I don't know why this historical document here this image does not show you Mr. Leonard where's Mr. where's Mr. Leonard in your maps Because he obviously flew up out the Donegal corridor and I believe he just went straight south. That's where I believe his heading was. He came out of Loch Erne up here and went as maybe far north as he could get and then directly down. And then we all know what happened to the Bismarck, and if you don't know, as the Bismarck came around between Greenland and Iceland, there was an engagement with HMS Hood, or the Mighty Hood, it's known as, and the Prince of Wales and six destroyers. And the Bismarck was with the, with the Prince Eugen at, at the time. And when... The engagement started, HMS Hood was sunk, rest in peace, um, the soldiers, and I think only three survived, I'm not too sure, but like 99% went down with the ship. And um, there's many different theories, I just think it was an absolute perfect shot 
and uh, after the hood was sunk, the Bismarck continued, and the Prince Eugen and the Bismarck separated, and the battle continued, and this is H Force that we got from the last description there, the last description about H Force and HMS Ark Royal sent swordfish planes and the Bismarck was struck on the propeller and he couldn't steer and he was forced to make um, circles and it just became like a turkey shoot it just became it was it was just shooting fish in a barrel and I believe the Bismarck sank himself. I think he sank him. The captain scuttled. Yep, scuttled. Ship following in, in, capacitating battle damage. Uh, so it was really the damage was done. The ship was going to go down anyway, but I don't know why. I say scuttled how, how do we not know that the ammunition didn't explode or I'm not, I'm not too sure but so let's get back to this so any possibility yep victorious prince of wales suffolk and repulse were forced to break off the search due to fuel shortage the heavy battleship remaining it's its force F, the King George and the Rodney, but they were too, but they were too distant. The Ark Royal Swordfish were already searching the area. This is a sword, the Swordfish. They were World World War One planes. Insane. And um, the Ark Royal Swordfish searching nearby when the Catalinas found her several. Torpedo boats also located the battleship about 60 nautical miles, 110 kilometers away from the Ark Royal. So Somerville ordered an attack as soon as the swordfish returned and rearmed with torpedoes. He detached the cruiser Sheffield to, the sh to shadow Bismarck, though Ark Royal aviators were not informed of this. As a result, the swordfish were armed with, with torpedoes equipped with magnetic detonators accidentally attacked the Sheffield and the magnetic detonators failed to operate and the Sheffield emerged unscathed. Isn't that crazy that if it wasn't for this mistake all these wee small things that come into play absolutely fascinating. Now imagine if they had worked and they just wreck their own ships. Jeez, war is hell. But uh, this is a fascinating story, and the man deserves a lot of respect for saving. I know many lives, many lives were killed, but to think of how the amount of lives that were saved. That's the way I look on it, and that's the way I look at. Uh, the troubles here too. There was so many lives saved as well as taken. Um, so at one stage during his naval career Smith worked alongside Richard Nixon who described as one of the most conscientious and hard working officers I'd ever met. So that just sums him up. Of course Nixon. This man's a bloody that's Watergate and all. All that stuff. What a fascinating guy, and trust me, there's going to be much more stuff like this, and I could go into way more detail into the Bismarck, but you probably know the story, but you probably didn't know um, that the boat actually left from Loch Erne, and there's all the survivors from the Bismarck. Absolutely terrible. Must have been a 
horrific experience and I'm sure when all these Germans were cheering and happy when HMS Hood went down God was listening I'm not I'm not judging them because I don't know if the Germans did cheer when HMS Hood went down but um Yeah, it's the HMS Dorstitcher. Dorstitcher. I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing that right. There is another image of the Bismarck underwater, and I believe that is CGI'd. I believe. Yeah, it's a painting. But it is down there. That is a fact. Okay, that's mainly it, and I don't know what else. This is another good image. Um, I'm not too sure if this is the Prince Eugen or is that the Bismarck? The Bismarck photograph from the Prince Eugen. Okay, it's from the Prince Eugen, and you wouldn't think the Bismarck was that big compared to the Titanic, would you? But it was. And I hope that I put that in scale and a wee bit of perspective and a bit of history because this is very, very, very entertaining. I mean, this is the Bismarck on trials, and the rangefinders had not been fitted yet, so there was no installation of any type of soft software. This was all hardware here, and that's mainly it. And uh, thank you very much for listening. And if you like this type of stuff, please stick around because there's going to be much more like it. And, uh, and yes, for the next video, I'm going to tell you the secret message around Belfast. So stick around for that too. And by the way, see the PB before go with the PBY planes they were actually landed in here and this is where Finn McCool threw the stone to Scotland a giant threw a stone and it became the Isle of Man and it does look like a man throwing a stone it is strange isn't it so how did the guys in ancient times uh, no, no, that, but did that look like a man throwing a stone? But yes, uh, stick around for the next video and thank you very much for listening and God bless everybody.